this is Rumor here to talk a bit of Buffy. I also have a video, which I'll leave a link to, of when I first received the Buffy deck last year and did my first impressions and screamed my full head off because I was so excited about it. It was just such a delight to see all 78 cards actually depicting something from the show. And I know that meant a lot to fans. They also got a lot of criticism probably <laughs> from the fandom as well for certain choices that maybe um, didn't readily make sense. I mean, everyone's got an opinion on stuff, right? And especially like a fandom as beloved as Buffy, we all have our own ideas. But I think that there could be multiple choices for different cards to make. And at some point, you just do need to make that decision. And so I think when you've got like the whole Buffy verse to choose from, yeah, there, there, there's a lot that's covered and probably trying to balance it out between characters and so forth. But then, of course, uh, where I did fall in with uh, criticism with everyone else was the fact that the guidebook did not appear to be updated to correspond with the final card illustrations that were going to be issued. So there was a huge mismatch. I think the majors were okay. I'm honestly not sure because after a while I stopped. I just wasn't looking at the book, uh, but I would like to read it just for enjoyment. The deck is so workable. It's a great deck. I carry it around with me in my purse. I've got a version that I have trimmed the borders off of that makes it a little smaller to do so. And of course they've got a mini that is either coming out or maybe it's already come out um, in a tin that is perfect for that purpose as well, just toting it along. But um, anyway, since I've already got my little smaller version, that's what I will travel with. And it is, again, like this deck, it does, it reads so well. So you don't even have to consult the guidebook. I just want to because for the cards that made me scratch my head a bit, I wanted to understand their rationale. And uh, just for the pure enjoyment of it, because other than the mismatch, they did a really great job with this. You can tell that the art and the guidebook descriptions were created by fans of Buffy. I mean, it's got the voice of the Scoobies. It does have the references to the show, even if they're the wrong ones for certain cards. But... It is just terribly fun. And so to celebrate in that creativity, I just really was looking forward to when that all got corrected, which I was hoping and praying it would be in these newer releases, the pocket one in the tin, along with this ginormous jumbo sized deck. So let me clear this off but i did want these cards on hand i edged this red i love it it's really weird because i remember when i first got this deck and started shuffling it it curved and i was kind of sad about that but then i edged it in a red sharpie and after that it straightened out so i don't know it must have been something with the ink seeping in the paper had that effect but the cardstock i think is lovely it's this beautiful matte it's so nice and sturdy can i just point out that i was this buffy for halloween <laughs> complete with blood stain on my shirt um from the seemingly fatal wound but anyway that was really fun so yeah, I was just overall pleased with the deck, the erroneous guidebook and questionable card choices and all, because honestly, for questionable choices, it was very few. And again, not even necessarily questionable. I wanted to, to know what their rationale was, and maybe that would help it all lock into place. I eventually found my own way with it and was able to find my own rationale. But um, now it's exciting to have this jumbo edition so that I can consult the guidebook and see what those changes are. Uh, that is probably the only reason why I did get this, even though it comes with these uh, fun accessories like a Buffy pouch and a wooden Buffy card stand. So I think I will use this over at my Buffy Shrine, drawing a card and 
propping it up there. But otherwise, as I said, I really, I don't think I felt the need for having it in jumbo or mini since I've already got a couple of copies of it. But this is really fun, actually. I do, like, now that I've got it in hand, it is great for just looking at the artwork that much more closely. And it kind of makes me think of the jumbo tarot cards that feature on the show. If you see Drusilla reading tarot or Tara doing it at the magic box, they've got like these oversized cards. So it's kind of in the spirit of that too. I haven't edged this. I'm not sure if I will, because again, I don't, I don't know to what extent I'm going to be using this deck other than maybe pulling that card to put in its stand over on my Buffy bookshelf. But uh, I'm not doing this as like an official like unboxing walkthrough type video. I've already walked through this deck. What I did want to do today though was just kind of play with it um, for my own self because I wanted to go through and identify the cards that did make me question a bit where they were going with it. Um, and so if I can find those and then go to the guidebook to see that description. So I'm not saying this is an exercise you necessarily want to participate in along with me. <laughs> I, I, I'm just doing it and, and deciding to share it. And so if you're along with me, that's cool. Uh, but you know what? One thing I I'll start with because I know for sure one card that I had a harder time rationalizing was in the cup suit, the chalices. Okay, I found it. I'm going to pick that one out in particular. And... find it in here as well. Wouldn't it be nice if I thought to put these in order, but I didn't. So bear with me. I'm just going to pick out two cards in question that I want to speak about. So one of the head scratcher cards for me in the original Buffy tarot deck was the eight of chalices. Uh, when I first saw it, I mean, I, I, again, loved it. I was loving everything when I first went through because again, just was very excited to see recognizable scenes from the show. And so seeing that this was Buffy when she is trying to outrun uh, these knights that are after Dawn as the key that Glory is seeking. And uh, the one thing, though, that didn't really jibe with my understanding of the Eight of Chalices was just the, the momentum, the speed of this. I get that kind of momentum in, in Eight of Wands. And with Eight of Chalices here, I would have expected something that was just a bit more moving on from something that is no longer serving anymore. And I usually see that depicted as a more peaceful scene of walking away in the moonlight, uh, leaving behind uh, what needs to be shed and left in the past, where this is just like such a swift escape. They're having to move on from a situation where they're, they're in a setting where they're no longer safe. But um, but I, again, it just, it kind of falls apart from there because it's not really um, an emotional moving on. It's emotionally motivated for sure, where Buffy wants to save her sister, but it's, it's really just uh, the point A, point B of it is really just to, um, you know, save Dawn in that case. So I think the original guidebook was a mismatch and what it said about it, I liked much better. <laughs> if your heart could beat, it would break your chest, wouldn't it? Now that is a reference to once more with feeling spike singing rest in peace and i'll be gal damned that is the card they have given to us 
So the Eight of Chalices that was originally in the Buffy Tarot, at least in this jumbo version, it's this. And I'm sure you can only guess how I feel about that. Uh, yeah, this is amazing. So can someone please tell me out there, does the um, regular sized tarot deck also have this change? Please inform, please inform, because I've got enough copies of that deck. I would really rather not get another copy of it. Again, that's why I got the jumbo because I wanted the new guidebook, but at least I was getting something different for that but um i am definitely going to want the regular deck i think if it is going to incorporate this card because i love it and for me personally this makes so much more sense for eight of cups than this because this is a point where spike is telling buffy to let him rest in peace like he still loves her but he just knows it's not going anywhere and when she is coming to him she's just kind of using him because she knows that he's really the only one she could talk to and tell the truth to at the point where she's not wanting the other Scoobies to know the truth of where she went after she sacrificed herself for the world. And he has emotionally grown to the stage where he just knows she's kind of coming over and using him. And I mean, that's before she really, you know, they really start using each other and things get toxic. This is just when they're kind of hanging out in his crypt and drinking booze and playing kitten poker. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, he's wanting her to just leave him alone. If she's not going to like meet him and be where he's at on this, he just knows it's better to just not kid himself that anything more is going to happen. And it just kind of tortures him more to have her around. So that is very much um, emotional growth there. And of course, we see with our boy, you know, he takes emotional steps forward. He takes giant leaps backward. But you know, it's always ultimately forward progressing. And I just love this so much. So it leaves me wondering, like, was this the original idea for the card? And that's why it was in the original guidebook, even though it no longer matched this? Or did they make the mistake? Like, were they supposed to replace this with this already? And then they had the correct entry. Like, I have no idea what the hell went on in the production of this deck and what changes were being made and when and just why there was the mismatch altogether. But in any case, this makes me so happy. Love that update to it. Uh, this other one where this happened, there's a second card in this jumbo deck that is different. And so again, questioning, is it also different in the regular size deck, the newer copies that are out now? Um, and I'm assuming it'll be in the mini pocket deck. But the original one was the three of pentacles with the trio, which actually I didn't have any problem with this one. So I don't know if they just did have different ideas for it originally, or maybe they were listening to fan feedback and maybe people didn't like this. Because, of course, the trio are despicable. <laughs> They're horrible, horrible. But, I mean, they were part of the show. Uh, they were the big bads, you know, of season six, at least before it was Dark Willow. And, I mean, believe me, I know that I have dissed them in my own ways. I've talked smack probably during my walkthrough of the original deck. And I know that I bypassed them in my big bad decks tag that I did to follow the Scooby decks tag, where instead of choosing a deck for the trio, because I just thought they were so evil and disgusting, I was glad that I didn't have a tarot deck in my collection that would emulate that. So instead I did Dark Willow and I, I showed a witchy deck instead. But it still made sense for me, though, for Three of Pentacles, because you do have the three of them. They're literally called the trio, and they each brought a different skill to the table to fulfill their um, misdeeds as nemesis sees. <laughs> you know, uh, Warren had the technological skill. Um, Jonathan could do magic. Andrew could summon demons, and he seemed to have knowledge of ancient languages and such. And so those different abilities came together into this collaboration that got things done, even if those weren't good things. So I don't know. This always worked, for better or worse. Um 
but the updated image is the Scoobies in the library, which I love. I adore this picture. Come on. Come on. <laughs> What's not to love here? Classic, them doing their research in the library. Again, that collaboration where they all bring their respective strengths, whether in this setting or any setting. That's always been the thing with the Scoobies, that they all have something to contribute individually that makes them stronger as a whole. And that's what enables Buffy to live longer as a slayer than they have historically, because she has family and friends and people who will work alongside her and those who will teach her. And so I think that this makes a wonderful three of pentacles as well. I guess my only thing is perhaps we do get to see these other characters elsewhere in the deck. And I don't really know. I know Andrew has a card. Um, I'm trying, I'm blanking on if Warren or Jonathan appear anywhere else, but it just seems like if this is really the only way of representing the trio, again, for better or worse in the deck, I thought it was really good. And so, I mean, I don't think we had to have any of these characters on another card, but regardless, it, it, this is great. So if I did get my hand on an updated version of this regular size deck, I think I would keep using this card, but then I would definitely swap out the uh, eight of chalices <laughs> for the spike one, no doubt. But anyways, I just wanted to highlight those two card changes. And at this point, I'm just going to flip through just to look for the ones that I'm curious what the guidebook has to say if the card choice wasn't totally clear to me. But I think for the most part, the major arcana made good sense to me. And again, I do think all of those guidebook entries were in sync with the art. So I probably don't need to be flipping through this right now. I'm just going to waste your time doing so. But okay, so getting in the minors where I do feel this will be the case. And yeah, I was able to take these on board pretty readily. Um, Andrew, as the Knight of Stakes, which would be Knight of Wands, not so much. Let me look to the original book to see. All right, sorry. The original one does sync with that, so... I'm not going to waste time here by going through, but I they did explain their rationale, and um, it's still kind of a stretch for me. But what if? This was great. Three of stakes. This one, I am pretty, pretty darn sure the guidebook did not have a matching one. I feel like it had something to do with the Dingo's Ate My Baby bus. <laughs> yeah, it's talking about like getting, not getting any further than the ladies' nightclub before your van broke down. And it just like, I don't know, it had this road trip explanation that didn't make much sense. So let's see now what this has to say. Because we've got... You know, it's Willow's doppelganger, which is great. And I guess before I look at this, my my rationale, how I kind of get there is that for Willow as a character, her vampire alter ego was expanding on her. And I think that in the process of actually needing this other self, and observing her, and then actually posing as her, Willow kind of pushed herself outside of boundaries where she's usually so shy, especially with respect to when she realizes vampire Willow, she thinks she's kind of gay, you know? So that could be like a beginning of awareness uh, for Willow herself. So that expansion of the three, I do see captured there. So, okay, fine. Enough of that. Let me see what they have to say. The Three of Stakes finds you considering new opportunities. Even if you aren't facing your vampire self, this is a great time to broaden your horizons through travel, different experiences, and maybe even some sweet leather pants. 
in reverse, like human willow, this card reverse suggests that you're playing things safe. While you may feel content, that could be because you have closed yourself off from exploring your potential. So yay me! <laughs> I'm excited that uh, the way that I got there is actually the intention behind this choice for this card. So I will just keep on with that. Um, I think this worked pretty good. I wasn't wild about this one for Six of Stakes, I guess. It definitely shows Buffy's accomplishments, but I guess I always look at the six, at least as far as Rider Waite Smith goes, as being like more of that external recognition of what you can do too. So I felt like maybe this could have been stronger. I don't have an immediate idea of what it would have been. Um, actually, scratch that. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Class Protector Award. So that was used for the world, but the class protector award at prom actually, yeah, would probably be more six of states to me. But let's see what they said. And first, I'm checking the old one just because I want to make sure that I'm not like dissing the original guidebook if it actually did give the right description. Okay, so... <laughs> Yeah, the original description was the same as is in this. So I guess this is the part where you've kicked a vampire in the head and run out. Virtue fluttering, and for good reason. You are absolutely killing it. The best part, people are taking notice. Okay, so I could have just read that in the first place, I guess, with the original deck. Um, I guess I just gave up on that guidebook, and I had not. So, okay, okay. I love the potentials for eight of states. Um, I really want to read the whole thing regardless because again, as I said earlier, just seems so entertaining to do so. I just really didn't want to do it if there were going to be descriptions not actually describing the art. <laughs> the minions. Yeah. Pretty good. Let me check though. I felt I understood that okay, but um, curious if it was described. Okay. Yeah, so this one is different because in the original one, it was like between managing her family, saving the world, and paying the bills, it can be hard for Buffy to find time to make sure her goals are aligned with her actions. So, uh, Obviously, that was not depicted in this card. This is Dehafrin, and I had seen it more as, I guess, in the sense of the vengeance demon, maybe like a reaping what you sow. I mean, that's the whole idea of the sort of vengeance that he and his demons who work for him, that they carry out based on what people have done and um, the negative outcomes of that then they enact that vengeance. But I guess the patience aspect of it that I usually associate with the Seven of Pentacles could be made clearer to me. When this card materializes in your reading, it's a reminder to play the long game. The Magic Council wasn't built overnight and it took cunning and foresight to plan all of those pesky loopholes. Similarly, you should be planning for your future and focusing your energy on the things that will bring you sustainable success. Uh, in the reverse, there are uh, there may be a presence in your life that's taking way more than you're willing to give. Even if you think you should allow this force in your life, the Seven of Pentacles challenges you to question why. If you aren't getting a return on an investment, there's no reason to stick around. Don't allow pride or embarrassment to compel you to embarrassment to compel you to stay in a draining situation. Uh, does that really explain to Hoffren either? Not so much, but I don't know.
my favorite but I get it it's like I don't understand having someone here that's not recognizable from the show but like I do see vampire legacy here um yeah yeah no um I don't remember though if that was explained no this one was about glory so I assume this is the same. Crap. <laughs> Did I just get these confused? I just got these confused. I don't know which is the new one or the old one. Crap. Okay, this is the old one. <laughs> um, I guess when I just think of Glory and you just, you see her with her hair and that red dress. I mean, I just, I could see her as a queen of wands very easily as well. So I almost want to put her there but um I do know that if she wasn't able to like feed off of people's mental energy then her thoughts lost their cohesion tying it in with the mental energy that's at stake pun intended here okay. so I don't know maybe I've just had this deck long enough that I have gotten myself where I needed to to use all these cards and not be questioning what they mean. This one, was this really explained? I think I rationalized it as the professor trapping herself in this cage of her own making because she just did have such a focus on the initiative and overlooked the consequences that it was having and just having that mindset. And she was the psychology professor as well. So she was very of the mind in that respect. And so it was a good fit for this suit. But it, as far as like what actually got her entangled, I mean, I really don't know how to justify it further than what I have already said. So I don't remember if I looked this one up before in the original guidebook. But let's just compare. It looks like it's the same. If people refer to you as the evil bitch monster of death, it might be a good time to rethink your worldview and appearance from the eight of sides means you have been holding on to outmoded beliefs and overly restrictive rules and have put yourself into a prison made of your own thoughts. I won't get it the reverse because it is the same as in the original. I evidently just didn't read it. Again, I must have just really given up early on that guidebook. Love this. I understood this. I think this was puzzling maybe to some, but I, I, I liked her. Wait, William. That's sweet. Sweet cream. Okay. And once again, I am not looking at trying to find all the guidebook entries that have changed from the previous one. I have just been looking specifically for the cards that made me go, huh, a little bit more than others. Not that I couldn't figure something out for them, but because now this original one is making a once more with feeling reference. Does it seem like every single night is the same arrangement where you go out and fight the fight? Have you been going through the motions, walking through the part? But this is clearly Principal Schneider, so I would like to know if they say anything about him. So here we go. Yes, it is different. When you say you want quiet, you want quiet. 
and not in the digestive system of a giant snake. Ha, good one. The four of chalices finds you feeling introspective, taking a pause from social activities and relationships, uninterested in any of the opportunities before you. While you probably shouldn't lose as much of your humanity as Snyder does. Have I been calling him Schneider? Snyder. <laughs> Allow yourself this time to withdraw and contemplate what does excite you. When reversed, you may be smelling trouble, expulsion, and the faintest aroma of jail. The world around you seems too hard to deal with. So instead of facing your problems, you're retreating and fault finding. The best cure for this, go for some of the touchy-feely relating nonsense you've been avoiding. It's unlikely you'll end up eating. <laughs> okay, so I mean, I think it's kind of grasping, but I can see it. I mean, I always felt that this posture suited Snyder. <laughs> So I could see, I could get the energy of four of chalices just, yeah, from this. Not that I saw him necessarily in a withdrawal mode, but I mean, I guess he does just in terms of like alienating himself from others where he could be a more approachable, agreeable person, but he just kind of puts that barrier up. So, that, okay, that, I mean... It's kind of how I saw it in the first place, but then that just like locks it in with a bit more since oh Buffy is Anne. Oh my god. No. <laughs> yes, that is so great. So great, so great, so great. Oh my goddess. And oh, this is the age to put back in order. Oh, rest in peace, dear sir. Okay, so uh, this really wasn't as um, interesting or exciting as <laughs> maybe it would be. It really was just mostly the fun of reading the entries. So there are going to be many more in here that I haven't read yet. I just didn't go over them today because they didn't relate to cards that I couldn't understand without that description. So um, that is something I will just do independently. But for what this was worth to you, I again, it was just something I was going to sit and do by myself. I just thought I'd turn the camera on. So I wasn't thinking that it was going to be like the most scintillating content that I could offer you. But if it gave you a peek at the jumbo in case you were curious about it if you didn't realize that there were these two different cards uh then i'm glad if it could inform you of that and then um yeah i mean otherwise like the card stock feels exactly the same it's really super sturdy i like the pouch i think that is nice <laughs> And yeah, I think I'm probably going to, well, I don't know. I was like, I'm going to take this guidebook and put it with the original deck, swap it out for the other one because it is the same size. Yes. Yes. I'm sure they deliberately did that so we can all slip it right into our original Buffy decks. But the only issue with that now is that there are two cards that are different. But I guess the number of entries that were updated versus number of cards with artwork updated, it, yeah, it outweighs that. So it's probably worth it to still do that. But in the meantime, I'll keep this for daily or weekly or monthly draws or something. It is just fun to have. I don't feel compelled to get the mini as well, but um, I probably wouldn't feel that way if I didn't have that extra deck floating around in my purse. This is cool though. This was very nice. And I think the packaging was overall, I don't usually like get all into that stuff because it doesn't ultimately matter if I like a deck. I don't need everything to be all fancy around it. Um, unless, you know, you're paying 
a decent amount of money for it, then you sure want the quality to be there, but I'd be happier to pay less, even if it meant a little bit less quality. But I mean, I think for this, um, yeah, it, it is very nice. I like it. It's very much a collector's item, I would say, and it will have a place at my Buffy shrine. So thank you for joining me and I hope you're all slaying it. Bye-bye.